Welcome back to Hour 3, and we have an amazing interview with Mark uh, Lerner of the ConstitutionalAlliance.org. You are a reference uh, on the aspects of the real ID. The latest, uh, I want to just pull out some of the news items, is the FBI are now suing multiple phone companies to get access to the backdoor password so they can get GPS coordinates on anybody's cell phone. And not just their cell phone, their data, their uh, messages, anything on their cell phone, which are now walking around computers. These new ones like the Galaxy and the new iPhone 4 and 5, now the 5 just come out. These are computers that can literally house any kind of data, including gigabytes of data. Uh, your GPS coordinates, uh, literally your Facebook page access, etc. So they really, uh, the government's coming about with a matrix, and the real ID issue is something that January 15th, 2013, this was put into law some years ago, January 15th, 2013, uh, which is literally four or five days before Inauguration Day, the day that we either compound or correct the error of the last term of the last president. Uh, and this is not a joke. So tell us all about it, uh, Mark. Well, here's where we're at, Bill. Uh, you're right. January 15th is the official implementation date for states to be in material compliance with the Real ID Act. Material defi- uh, compliance is defined as meeting the first 18 out of 39 benchmarks. Now, here's the thing about it. There are a lot of organizations around the country that we work with at the Constitutional Alliance. And unfortunately, and I'm just going to tell it the way it is, a lot of organizations want to take credit for something that hasn't actually even occurred. In this case, saying that real ID is dead. Well, real ID is not dead. If you think it's dead, talk to the people in Florida and other states that already have a gold star on their driver's licenses. That gold star comes when the governor requests from the Department of Homeland Security for permission to put a gold star on that state's driver's licenses. Now, what that means is, with the gold star, that license is an acceptable form of identification for federal government purposes. But here's the wrinkle. The Department of Homeland Security, realizing half the states, either through law or resolution, are prohibited from participating in Real ID by their state legislatures, DHS has come out and said, look, we understand you can't fully comply and the final step in compliance is the gold star. But you can meet all the benchmarks and we will consider you Real ID compliant. So what's going on in is in many states, the states have met 14, 15 of the 18 benchmarks and by January will, for the most part, be in material compliance, even if there was a law or resolution passed in their state prohibiting participation in real ID. Right. That also being, means, by the way, the Secretary of, of the Homeland Security, currently Napolitano, could actually make an edict later that can add a RFID tracking chip that can have a reader distance far longer than people realize. Like a cell phone time, chip. You are absolutely right. One of the biggest reasons we oppose the Real ID Act, it gives the Department of Homeland Security Secretary unfettered discretion to change what is called the official purposes. Today it includes flying commercial airlines, entering a federal building, or if you went into a nuclear facility. But the the Secretary could wake up tomorrow and say, You're going to incorporate RFID chips into driver's licenses. You're going to have to have a real ID compliant license to purchase a weapon, ammunition, go to a doctor, whatever the case may be. And by the way, these chips could be trackable with a smart highway system that they're already introducing so that your car will have a tag on the car that can not only track the car, but also track you. So it'll know not only who the car is, but who's actually driving the car. 
which they can then verify with a, with a with a visualization through the windshield of the car with a picture and or a terahertz scan, which, by the way, can go right through the glass. Because one of the problems with facial identification is it's not very accurate from a distance through glass at an angle, but a terahertz infrared scan, right, a terahertz microwave scan can go through glass and is a much longer reader distance of three to 400 meters rather than 10 to 12 yards or meters and that can actually read. Currently, facial recognition in terms of cameras on the ground can be effective up to a half mile away. Yeah, but those have but, to have be no barriers and uh, all the other things. And uh, but, here, but here's the yeah. thing. We have satellite technology that can literally look down to the ground and read the license plate on a car. Exactly. So, it, this look, the whole, what I want people to understand... Our organization, the Constitutional Alliance, is not specific to real ID. Right. Yes, we focus on it, and there's a reason why. If you are in a real ID compliant state, matter of fact, regardless of what state you live in, the vendor for your driver's license is now a company called Morpho Trust. Morpho, Morpho. Trust. Does that sound like Morpheus uh, from the. Uh from the, from the Matrix, Morpho Trust? Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Previously, it was L1 Identity Solutions. L1 was sold to this French company called Saffron, S-A-F-R-A-N. Now, Saffron created a U.S. subsidiary called Morpho Trust. Oh, now, wonderful. here's the thing. Saffron is one-third owned by the French government. In addition to that, they have offices all over the world, including in China, in China, and they have it on their own website. They have a 40-year partnership with China. But that's the story about Saffron is only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, because I think I the, want, the two big countries that they're currently more that they're working with Saffron is India and China. And the Indians expect within, I think, two years or three years, they'll have every citizen in India with a biometric scan for the retina, iris scan, and, and 10 digital fingerprints, right? They're working towards 1.2 billion people. Yeah. But here, here's the point I want to make about this. All the standards, when we talk about the Real ID Act, and people talk about it in terms of a national ID, that is only the start. That is not where it ends. This company, Morpho Trust, previously L1. Previous, uh, can we refer to it as Morpheus Trust? Okay, Morpheus Trust. <laughs> Just if for people that want to keep their mind focused on the fact, Matrix, Matrix. Oh, gee, I don't, I don't think we want to go there. Well, here's we the thing. On their website, they list the standards they use for state driver's licenses. The standard for your digital facial image, your photograph, is a standard that comes directly from the ISO. ISO stands for the International Organization of Standardization. International Organization of Standardization. These are international standards being applied to all federal and state identification documents. So yes, real ID is national ID, but it is much more. It wouldn't matter if you were in Dallas, Texas, or in Paris, France. With the use of CCTV, closed circuit television cameras, and facial recognition software, you would be able to be identified. That's the point. It yeah, in other words, uh, this data can be transferred to Interpol, and if you fly into Frankfurt, they can identify with the digital uh, standards being so similar. It's easy for them to transfer the data and say, ah, you pass through our cameras on such and such a road. We know that it's you from your data that was transferred to Interpol. Now, I want, I want people to understand how this works. Right now in the United States, all the states, every state, and the seven U.S. territories, they communicate information about DMV databases through what is called AMVA.net, A-A-M-V-A dot net. AMVA 
which stands for the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators. You would think that is an American organization. Again, if you go to their website, it says they are an international organization that serves motor vehicle administrators and law enforcement. So when you go to the partners of AMBA and you look on their website, you will see not just Interpol, but other international entities that are partnered with AMBA. So, but here, here's the bigger issue. And it, I know not everybody is going to like what I'm going to say right now, but you know what? Sometimes you just need to say what needs to be said. Right. We have everybody mm-hmm. focusing on elections, whether it's local, state, or national elections. And I'm going to tell people point blank, that is not the best place to use your resources. You are not going to change what Congress is going to do. Three billion a year is spent lobbying Congress. And we'll talk about it on the other side of the break. Yeah, it's important to understand what's really going on. In other words, the changing of the guard doesn't mean the changing of the policy. Report and Mark Lerner of the organization Constitutional Alliance.org. Uh, let's talk about the real action plans and what we mentioned on the break. Some very important talking points. Yeah, one of the thing I want uh, things I want people to understand, and sometimes the best way to communicate something is by telling a story. I was in Washington D.C. recently, not too long ago, and I was going to attend a hearing call for the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. Senator Lieberman was the committee chairman. Now here's what happened. All kinds of citizens were interested in listening to this hearing. So they were waiting in line. The line went all the way around the corridor, hundreds, over 100 people. And I noticed that there was one person who was standing outside the line. So I asked that person, who are you? And they said, I'm a lobbyist for L1, or now Morpheus Trust. Ooh, so, Morpheus, yeah. yeah no, when I, the love door it, opened, I love it, I love it. Yeah, when the door opened for everybody to go into the hearing and get a seat, the first person led in the room was the lobbyist who was not waiting in line. The lobbyist from the Matrix. Yes. Now, here's the thing about it, people. You got 535 people that belong to Congress. 100 in the Senate, 435 in the House. $3 billion a year is spent lobbying 535 members of Congress. That's $5.5 million per member of Congress, and that's lobbying money. That does not include campaign donations. So if you think it's your voice, the voice of the people that's being heard, you're wrong. And I'm going to give you an example. Everybody is familiar today with drones. Okay, we're going to have thousands, tens of thousands of drones, literally, flying over the United States. By it's estimated, yeah, it's estimated, by the way, that these drones have been already given FAA approval for airspace and that there are up to 30,000 that can be deployed basically right now. I mean, well, I don't know how fast they're going to be deployed. But yeah, but they, but, 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 but they have a lot. Yeah. People to know, Bill. Here, yeah. he, that's not the important part of the story. The important part yeah. of the story is this: the drone industry has become so powerful. You now have fifty-eight members of Congress that belong to the Drone Caucus. There is actually a caucus okay. in Congress that fifty-eight members belong to. Now, the drone lobbyists have spent $23 million lobbying Congress. What that allowed them to do is they literally wrote the rules for the implementation of drones over U.S. airspace. Wow. So in other words, let's change the name from drone to, you know, 
uh, this flying RoboCop. Call them whatever you want. You, in other words, they're focusing so people understand just how dystopic this is. And it's not a distant future either. This is something they're planning to implement now. Here's what I, here's what I want to tell people, though, because, look, we have a lot of groups running around, and I work with many of them. I'm on the board of directors, et cetera. And I tell people, you know, if you're walking around telling people to educate and motivate people, you're never going to get the job done. Education and motivation will not do it alone. You have to empower people. And here's the problem. If somebody supported Ron Paul, if they were against the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, if they were against NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, people that have a long history of being activists and being opposed to things, time after time after time have been defeated. Educating and motivating is not enough. You have to empower people. The only way to empower people is to be able to point out the successes that your organization has had. Too many organizations are worried about growing their membership and raising money. The Constitutional Alliance, we can show people well, we've gone to dozens of states, we've testified, we have, we created, we wrote, we worked with, with lawmakers in the states to prohibit participation in real ID. But here's what's happened. We came to recognize about a year or two ago that trying to get things done in your own state legislature or in Congress is a losing proposition. Exactly. Now, we know, we know you're not going to win in the federal courts. We saw what the Supreme Court did with Obama court, Obamacare. Okay? Now, that leaves you one option. If you're a citizen and you want change, you do it in your state courts. And one of our board members, Kay Beach, she filed a lawsuit in the state of Oklahoma. That lawsuit specifically addresses what information she would be required to provide the Department of Motor Vehicles in order to obtain a state driver's license. Right. The state of Oklahoma wanted her biometrics, uh, what we call a high-resolution digital image photograph specifically set the standards international for use with facial recognition. They also wanted her fingerprints. And her lawsuit is basically, look, she'll provide her birth certificate, you can authenticate it, she'll provide her social security number, but you can't keep it in your database. You then know who she is. That's all you get to know. And this lawsuit is currently underway in Oklahoma. So we are asking people, look, go to the Constitutional Alliance website. It's constitutionalalliance.org. And give. Give generously until it hurts. And if you're a Christian, I'm going to tell you something. I have been on every major Christian television network. Trinity Broadcasting Network, Daystar Church Channel, and they invite me on there because they want me to talk about biblical prophecy as it relates to what is taking place today. Right. And the one line that I always tell people, <clears throat> and I can document it, you are being enrolled into a global system of identification that directly links you through your body biometrics to your ability to buy, sell, and travel. Right. Now, I want to do a linkage to not only the prophecy of Revelation 13, but also to the what's called the unending QE3. They call it infinite QE3. $80 yeah. billion dollars printed a month. Now could easily go up to two or three hundred billion a month. We know there'll be at least a trillion dollars more debt. When you do that, you're literally stealing out of my back pocket, out of anybody's house equity, out of their pension funds. And, and the credit, by the way, is not going to go to U.S. business. It's not going to expand credit. It's going to international banksters. This is the plan to collapse the currency, and eventually they want a global world currency that's biometric, where there's no money anywhere. 
No money in your pocket, no gold or silver coins. In fact, as it says in the Bible, your gold and silver were a canker. They want biometric money with the divots in their supercomputer only. The money, if you start naked, your biometrics is in their computer. Welcome back, and um, I'm strongly recommending everybody out there listening uh, support and donate to the Constitutional Alliance. I know when we had you on last, Mark, I did, did a donation. I'll be doing that again to constitutionalalliance.org, Constitutional Alliance. Your organization is the central organization in America and probably in the world that actually is specifically telling uh, all these other organizations exactly what's going on have the proper reference and expertise and action plans. In other words, I call it tips for evangelizing your neighbors and getting involved with legislation, etc. Literally an action plan to how to get involved so you can actually stop this mess from getting even more malignant. Uh, give us some of those ideas. Okay, number one, the first thing I tell lawmakers is I testify around the country and I tell the leaders of different groups, I tell them Whenever you're considering a law, you must not look at that law and the technology that's allowed to be used by that law separately, individually. You've got to look at every law and technology in the aggregate. In other words, just because you have one law that says you can use fingerprinting for whatever purpose, You can't just look at that law and say, well, that's a good law because we want to do something about this problem. It's when you go back and you look at the totality of all laws, the technologies that those laws authorize to be used. And remember, when it comes to technology, every technology has multiple applications. So what you have to do is if you look at the aggregate of all the laws, the Patriot Act, Real ID, the NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, executive orders, when you look at all the laws, the regulations, the executive orders, all the technologies, there's not a person who can deny we have created a surveillance society in this country. Now, I tell people... Liberty is neither ours to give or take, only preserve. Our liberty comes from our Creator. But here's the way you need to approach it. If you're going to go talk to your neighbor or somebody you work with or somebody at church, here's the way to break it down to them in a way they will understand. Say to the person, look at it this way. If you have a couple of eggs and home fries in the morning, it's not a big deal. If you have a donut, it's not a big deal. One bag of potato chips is not a big deal. Eating fried chicken one day is not a big deal. Certainly having one Coke is not a big deal. One day without exercise is not a big deal. Now imagine in one day, You have a couple of eggs with home fries, you eat a donut, knock off a bag of potato chips, swallow down a plate of fried chicken, gulp down a Coke, and then sit around and do no exercise. Then it becomes a big deal. You're going to gain a lot of weight. But then the person says, yeah, but I'm not going to do that every day. I'll change that tomorrow. The problem is, tomorrow never comes. You see, when we first, as a country, adopted the Patriot Act, and we accepted it, let me tell you something. The people reelected the people that passed the Patriot Act. 401 out of 405 members of the House that ran for re-election, 30 didn't run, 401 of of the 405 were re-elected. What kind of message did that send to Congress? We supported you when you passed the Patriot Act. The numbers weren't any different in the Senate. Only one senator wasn't re-elected after the Patriot Act was signed into law in 2001. 
But then after the Patriot Act, all of a sudden we had CCTV, closed circuit television cameras everywhere. Then we had real ID. Then we had NDAA. Then we had automatic license plate readers that can scan thousands of license plates in one minute. Now we have street lights that have cameras and audio devices in the street lights. And now they can actually have, intercept a person and actually tell you you're doing something that's unacceptable. That's unbelievable. Yeah, now we have drones. We have computer software that, is, that makes a determination of whether we're more or less likely to be a threat to our government based on our facial expressions, the way we walk, and the way we dress. So just like the person that started out and said, well, eating a couple of eggs and home fries is no big deal, it's not the individual thing. You have to look at the totality of what is being done. So when you go to talk to your neighbor across the street, and you don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, you don't want them to shut your door, start off with, look at it this way, a couple of eggs, home fries, no big deal, a donut, no big deal, etc. Use that as a foundation to point out it's not just one law. It's the totality, it's the totality of all the laws, the technologies, the executive orders, the regulations that have created the surveillance society we live in today. Yeah, well, there are two and major ones that, that Obama did this spring, the National Defense Authorization and the Expropriation Act added to all these other things. And the implementation, of course, five days before inauguration. That's unbelievable. What, what I want people to understand, nobody will ever argue with you when you say a surveillance society cannot be reconciled with a free society. Yeah, exactly. That is an absolute statement of fact. You cannot reconcile a surveillance society with a free society. Yeah. Yeah. In so, fact, the fact that the FBI now, under Obama, is actually suing the phone companies to get access to every phone company's cell phone backdoor password so they can actually know your GPS coordinates everywhere and get total access to all your data on your well, phone. Here, here's the thing. Here's why it's important people go to our website and donate today. And I mean generously. Yeah, today. And yeah, this needs to be done. Friends. Yeah, we're, we're counting down. We have October, November, December, January. We have four months, and this will be implemented in uh, federally to all the states. And it just depends on the whim of the uh, next uh, next uh, secretary of the uh, Department of Homeland Security. If they wake up on the wrong side of the bed and say, you know, we've had enough terrorism and things, and domestic, etc., we need to put a tracker chip in every ID. We, don't we need to have, have terahertz scanners on every light pole, so 400 meters from now we can actually track somebody even in the dark and know who they are, not just from their facial scanner, but from the biometrics of their whole body, uh, which we now have a database from the airport. I want people to understand, we don't even have four months, Bill. Yeah. Kay Beach's lawsuit, one of our board of directors members, it's right. in the courts right now. It's going to be decided over the next two months. Right, so we need and to do we it need immediately. Your yeah. support today, right? Not tomorrow. Yeah. And right. Kay Beach is a mother. She's a wife. She's a patriot. She's a Christian. And if you're a Christian, I will pray for you. But you better go to our website, constitutionalalliance.org. We have a section on the home page titled "What Christians Need to Know." But if you're not a Christian, you still have rights in this country, and our organization is standing up for your rights as well. Exactly. But I will tell you this, if you scroll down to the bottom of our home page, you will see a video where on one side of me is a representative from the ACLJ, the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sokolow's group, and on the other side of me is a representative from the ACLU. Groups on the left and right have come to us to support the work we're doing. But we don't take money from any groups or organizations. We only take money from individual citizens. We will not be co-opted. That way you're not beholden to a specific organization or co-opted. Yeah, you want to make sure 
Your funding is totally citizen-driven so that you're not being manipulated by one group or another to, to specific ends. Exactly. Very important. ConstitutionalAlliance.org. Donate now. Welcome back, and the way to contact uh, Mark and his organization, ConstitutionalAlliance.org, ConstitutionalAlliance.org. The other is website uh, email address is StopRealID at AOL.com, StopRealID at AOL.com. The, um, what people should understand, because it's so, the people in my outbreak, they don't realize that these things are happening in America. And you mentioned on the break that the L1 was actually sold uh, to China. So in other words, we literally well, sold technology to China to suppress L- their citizens and track and suppress their own dissidents. Yeah, Tell us about this. Here's what happened. L1 Identity Solutions sold their technology to a Chinese citizen who they knew lived in China and was giving that technology to the Chinese government. The Chinese government wanted the technology, facial recognition, to be able to identify dissidents when they went out in public. So if you want to know more about that, Naomi Klein, K-L-E-I-N, wrote a great article called The All-Seeing Eye. All-Seeing Eye, Naomi, Naomi Klein. Now, she details in her book, in, in this, and she's written articles about it, that we actually provided the Chinese government with facial recognition technology so they could, look, they could identify the dissidents. Just like in our country today, facial recognition is being used to identify people that attend protests or rallies, etc., that's yeah, the so, government we and I want people to understand this. Twelve years ago, if I'd have told you there would have been a Patriot Act, you would have said no. If I would have told you there'd be an NDAA, you would have said no. If I would have told you there would be drones flying over US cities, you would have said no. The point yeah. is, people, it's not only happening, it's already happening, and it's happening at a much quicker speed. Speed. It's not about safety. It's not about what's best for you. It's about control over your life. Now, one and of the things that's interesting, yeah. Christians had better understand this because if they're familiar with the book of Matthew or they're pr- familiar with Daniel or Isaiah and especially what John wrote in the book of Revelation, they would know we are headed towards a one world government where your ability to buy and sell will be controlled by the Antichrist. Yeah, you will exactly. be told to either worship the Antichrist or you will be to put to death. Now, if you're a pre-tribulation rapture Christian, I understand. I'm not arguing. My point is, before you ever get to the rapture, Christians will continue to be persecuted even more than what they are today around the world. And how are you going to meet your responsibility to preach the gospel to the whole world if you need the consent of government? The bottom line is this. Government is supposed to be based on the consent of the governed, not the governed requiring the consent of government. Exactly. Now, uh, let me identify a few benchmark points here. Number one, and I've said this on the program before, the mark of the beast will come out of America, not Belgium, not Beijing, China, not Moscow. And the reason is the U.S. dollar is a world reserve currency. If you look at the number of not only printed dollars, but electronic currency dollars that are floating in cyberspace around the world, 85 to 87 percent of all the dollars printed, and it's more all, all the time. In fact, now with the, quote, infinite, with the infinite or unending QE3, the number of printed dollars or currency in the world is going to dramatically increase so that percentage that's actually printed in dollars is going to go from, say, 87 or 85 percent up to 90 or 95 percent. The euro dollar could never replace it, neither could the yuan in China, even though they print as much as they can, or any other currency on earth. 
Now, when that currency becomes eventually a biometric currency, and then if they link it to all other currencies on the planet through a, a means of, of, of controlled exchange, and now it's against the law to actually have physical money in your pocket, that everything is electronic. In many countries now, they won't allow a, a, a check to be sent to you. They actually will only allow electronic deposits. Well, you combine all these technologies together with the Appropriations Act and the NDAA and the Real ID Act, etc., and it's not just being done in America. It is being done in every single nation on Earth where Real ID is coming in internationally, and they want a seamless standard so that it doesn't matter where you are, they can know where you are. Look, That's uh, I, I want to make one point, Bill, before we run out of time. Yeah. If people have a question about where their state is on real ID, if you think just because a law was passed in your state or a resolution you're not participating in real ID, email stopreallid at AOL.com and we will tell you how many of the 18 benchmarks your state has already met. So you may think that you're being protected against real ID. You're not. Your state, and I don't care what state you're living in, is moving towards real ID compliance by meeting the 18 benchmarks. No, I, real I wanna... ID is just a name. It's the benchmarks that make it so egregious. Now, one of the things that uh, when I was one of the civilian doctors on contract with the Virtual World Project at Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado, uh, there's a linkage to this new giant facility they're building in Utah, which is millions of square feet of the largest computing capacity on the planet. And this is all data acquisition of American citizens, of citizens of other countries. What do you think of these giant, we call super databases, that are based on... There are on, three of them. Yeah. You've got one outside of Washington, you've got one in San Antonio, Texas, and now you have the most recent one in Utah. Right. But, this, but look, the purpose of this is to create a 24-7 digital footprint of everybody's life. So right. no matter what you do, it's recorded digital, digitally and put in a database. It's what I refer to as knowing the who, what, how, when, and where of every aspect of your life. Right. That's why, so, by the way, I don't endorse Facebook, LinkedIn, or any of these other social networking sites. And I did it as an experiment last year to see how quickly I would get, and I'm still getting requests to join these. The fact is, these are actually going to giant days, databases, and that that's why you find, uh, you know, the idea that Zuckerberg uh, discovered and, and invented Facebook. He's the face of Facebook. It is a part and parcel of the of the no such agency. He's a part and parcel of the global acquisition to create a virtual copy of Earth in cyberspace. Well, here's what I want people to know about that. There is a institution, for lack of a better word, called InfraGuard. I N F R A G U A R D. InfraGuard is a collaboration between the government and private sector. And what it is, it allows for the free flow of information between corporate entities and government. Robert Mockney, who is with the Department of Homeland Security, he's on record as saying, we are going to create a global security envelope. And as part of that global security envelope, your biometrics and other information will be shared globally with governments and corporations. And That's makers. not me saying it. That's our government saying right. it. And at the peak of this pyramid of power are the bankers, which means the mark of the beast is coming if you don't stop this. People say, oh, no, that's, that's just theoretical. I want to say something else. I had a lady back in, uh, in her 70s, back in 1999, that came to my lecture with, uh, in, in Dallas with the Prophecy Club. And we had about 800 people in the audience. And I had a lady come up to me afterwards. She said, Dr. Deagle, I don't understand. You didn't mention anything about the rapture. I said, well, listen to this. I said, here's the rapture. If you're lucky or unlucky enough to be at the bottom of a, of a, uh, you know, a, a uh, nuclear f bomb coming down in your city, say, here in Dallas, and you're vaporized, you're going to say, hello, Lord? I said, that's the rapture. The first thing well, is, the rapture 
is a, uh, and I can say this with with all certainty, the rapture is something that's going to occur when Yeshua HaMashiach, the Most High God, arrives on earth. And that's at the end. That's not going to be, you're not going to be raptured out of this Look, mess. We have to stand up and speak out and do something now, because we're not going to avoid this persecution and this type of death and destruction that's Bill, going to come on us. On our website, we address this. We, we, we talk to the people that are pre-trib rapture, mid-trib, and post-trib. Regardless of where it affects them all. at on the rapture, we address it. Go yeah, to constitutionalalliance.org as a Christian or non-Christian and support the work we're doing. It will make a difference now. Exactly. Wherever you stand, whether you're a non-Christian or an atheist, it's... 